We've seen in previous videos the idea of the symbolic uh, reasoning architectures for agents and the idea of making decisions about what action to perform via logical reasoning. And in this video I'm just going to introduce one well-known uh, programming language which takes this idea very, very seriously. Uh, and this programming language is called Concurrent Metatem. Uh, and the idea uh, in Concurrent Metatem is that you program an agent by giving it a temporal logic specification of its desired behaviour. So you'll remember previously when we talked about deductive reasoning architectures, we had this idea of row being uh, a set of rules, a logical theory which encodes the optimal action for our agent to perform at any given moment. Well, in concurrent metatem, uh, that row, that set of rules which define the optimal action to perform, uh, is encoded in temporal logic. Well, temporal logic sounds a bit scary, so let's just see uh, how the temporal logic used in concurrent metatem works. It's actually quite intuitive. The idea is that we use a bunch of what are called temporal operators to augment classical logic. So here's the first of these operators, this empty box symbol. The idea is we apply this empty box symbol to a logical formula, and it means it is now and it always will be true that this formula is true. Okay? It is now and always will be true that this is true. Okay? Now and forevermore, this will be true. So this diamond symbol here means eventually, it means at some point in the future, it will be true that. So we read this formula as, as it is now and always will be the case that agents are important, and we read this formula here as uh, it will at some point in the future be the case that concurrent metatem is important. So these are what's called unary operators, they take a single argument. Here we have a binary operator, this U here, and the U stands for until. And what this means here is that the right hand side is eventually true, and that all the time points until then, hence U, until, at all the time points until then, the left hand side is true. So in this case, we are not friends, not friends us, until apologise you. So at some point in the future you apologise, and at all the time points until we get there, we are not friends. So the model of time that underpins concurrent metatem is what's called a discrete model, and it has the idea of what's called next states, and this circle refers to these next states. This means in the next state that I'm in, apologise you. So think about it as meaning tomorrow. In fact, what it means in concurrent metatem is the next decision cycle that I'm in, you apologise. So these operators, the empty box, the diamond, the U, and the empty circle, these are temporal operators, which we apply to formulas of classical logic to get what are called temporal formulas. Okay, so the idea then in concurrent metatem is we write down a bunch of these formulas in the form past implies future. And the way that we interpret those rules is, if the past matches this formula, the past part of this formula, if the things that I've seen match the past time part of this formula, then I will become committed to the future time part. I will try to make the future look like this. So if the past looks like this, then I make the future look like this. So this gives rise to the name of the paradigm, it's sometimes called declarative past and imperative future. So we're continually looking at these rules and saying, does what I've witnessed match this pastime part? And if it does, then we say the rule fires and it becomes a commitment to try and make the future look like this. So here is a simple example of a metatem program, and this is actually a resource controller. So the, the idea is there's a resource, like a printer, which is infinitely renewable, you can use it again and again and again, but it's non-shareable, so you should only ever allocate it to one uh, individual at any given time. And here is a program which encodes these kind of ideas. So it's got two rules in this metatem program. The first rule says, if yesterday, the last decision cycle I was in, so that's what that partially filled in square says, if the last decision cycle I was in, individual X asked for the resource, then eventually I will give it. The second rule says that if I give to X and I give to Y, then X and Y must in fact be the same individual. 
So this first rule says that whenever somebody asks you, then you commit to eventually give them. You promise essentially that you're eventually going to give them. The second rule says that you never give to more than one individual at the same time. So there is a very high level, succinct definition of the behaviour of a resource controller. So this, we say this is a concurrent meta ten programme. A bunch of rules of the form past implies future. So if I think yesterday somebody asked me for the resource, then I commit to eventually giving them the resource. Well, to turn those programmes into agents, uh, in concurrent meta term, we have to give them a name and an interface. So the name just uniquely identifies them in the system, and the interface defines the messages that the agent will send and receive. So as in agent zero, our agents can send messages in concurrent meta term, but these messages in concurrent meta term are just simple predicates. So we don't think in concurrent meta term of having informal requests, they are just simple predicates. So. Let's have a look at our resource controller, which we're going to dress up as Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So Snow White, the, the story goes, Snow White has a bag of sweets, and she's prepared to give out these sweets, but she will only give to one dwarf at any given time. So Snow White has, here is the Snow White program, and it is in fact the resource controller that we just looked at. You can see that the rules there are exactly the same as the rules that we defined earlier. So there's her name, Snow White, that just uniquely identifies her in the system. And then we've got between round brackets, we've got messages that Snow White will listen to. So whenever she receives a message, what she does, whenever she receives a message from another agent, she tries to match that message against the ones that she will uh, receive. Okay? And in this case, she's just looking for messages that say, ask for the resource. And then between square brackets are messages that she will send. And the idea is whenever a predicate, whenever something becomes true inside her beliefs, she looks to see whether this is one of the messages that she will send, that is if the predicate is of the form give something, and if, if it does match, if it is one of the messages that she will send, then she broadcasts that message out to all the other agents in the system. So, there's her name, the messages that she's listening for, the messages that she will send, and the program part. So we can put Snow White together with some other agents. So I'll just give a couple of examples. So here we have an agent called Eager. All right? There's his name. So this line defines his interface. His name, messages he's listening for, messages he will send. So messages he's listening for, he's only listening for give messages. Intuitively, the Eager agent is just listening out to see when he is given one of Snow White's suites. And he's, he will send ask messages. So he's listening to give messages, and he will send ask messages. And then he's got two rules. The first one says, this just means that when you start executing, when the, when the eager agent starts executing, this rule immediately fires. So the idea is, he will immediately make this true, ask eager. Now ask is one of the messages that he will send, so when this gets added to his beliefs, we get a match there. This is one of the messages that he'll send. So this predicate, ask eager, will get broadcast out to all the other agents in the system. Okay, so this predicate, ask eager, will get broadcast out to all the other agents in the system. The second rule says, if ever eager is given a sweep, then he will immediately ask again. So you can see when you put this behavior together with Snow White, what happens is, Eager starts out by making this true, ask Eager, so that becomes true in his beliefs. But it's one of, ask is one of the messages he sends, so he then immediately broadcasts this, ask Eager, out to all the other agents in the system. But then Snow White is listening out for ask messages, so she sees that ask message, then this rule fires and she commits to eventually give Eager one of these suites, so give X where X matches to Eager. So this becomes, when she makes that commitment true, this is one of the messages that she will send. So she broadcasts give eager back out into the system. Eager is listening for give messages. So it's one of the messages that he will receive. So he, when Snow White gives him a suite, he adds that to his beliefs. And the next decision cycle that he's on, this rule fires and he immediately asks her for a suite again. That message then gets broadcast out again, it goes back to Snow White. Uh, this rule fires again, she gives him a sweep, and so on.